What up? Welcome to the show. Good vibes this weekend for the Bengals on Fantennial Weekend, but the excitement was quickly zapped at PBS today. Bengals hosting the Jaguars. Icky Woods doing the Icky Shuffle. Energy felt right early on. First quarter, Gardner Minshew sacked by Geno Atkins. He's been quiet this year. Spoke up today with two sacks. Second quarter, offense finally woke up. Andy Dalton hooks up with Alex Erickson, and he gets free for 48 yards. He had 137 today, and that leads to this. Andy to Smoking Joe for six. The first offensive touchdown in the first half for the Orange and Black since week two. And that's reason to dance. Bengals lead seven to three. Leads get, gets up to 10-9 in the fourth, and it's all downhill from there. Gardner Minshew to Keelan Cole to give the Jags the lead. 17-10 after the two-point conversion. Then we get the worst of bad Andy. That is a pick six when they had a chance to tie the game. And that, in essence, puts this one away. And he threw three interceptions on three straight possessions, and he's got eight of them this year. Bengals lose 27-17, 0-7 this season. I think we do have to look at everything. You know, we, we got to look at um, our overall approach because it's frustrating. And, um, you know, we, we can't have big enough egos to where, hey, you know, this, this player is playing at this position or, or we have to continue to do it this way as a coach. We, we got to look at everything and make sure that we're giving ourselves the best chance to get a win. It's been frustrating. Obviously, every every interview you guys have today is probably going to be the same message. You know, frustrated guys, and because uh, we're putting it all out there. You know, we're putting it all in line, and uh, just coming up short every week is it's been it's been heartbreaking, really. And it's been very tough to be in the position that we're in right now, to not have won a game at this point, and it's the standard's way higher than that. I right, got my Bengals with me in the house once again to break down what we saw today. Jim Brees, the all-time leading scorer in franchise history, and Rodney Heath, who played cornerback for three seasons on the squad. Good evening, fellas. How you nice, feeling? Thanks for having us, man. Thanks, Reggie. Feeling good? <laughs> Not really. It was, it was a nice Sunday. I mean, yeah, there was some nice. good stuff that actually went on. They had a lead at halftime for the first time for a long time. And yeah. So they had a chance today in Jacksonville. It seemed like the energy was good. It was it was kind of ripe for a win today, but still just some of the same mistakes plaguing them all season, rearing their ugly head again today. This is just, can we just say it? It's a bad football team. No, I, 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 I don't want to go there yet. I mean, I, any team that's in the NFL, I mean, you got your levels of how good teams are. I mean, if we're just saying bad over, over the end, I, I don't know necessarily. I don't want to say that. What I want to say is they have issues. Right. They have issues up front on the offensive side. Defensive side, I thought they played a lot better today. They, they kept them in the game a little bit more, but the turnovers and things like that at the end of the game is really what sealed their, their fate, like you said. So um, if they can fix the offense, they got a lot of holes they got to fix, though. So I just can't say it's just that. You know, they, they can't afford to make the mistakes that they make. They can't afford to drop passes. Mm -hmm. They can't afford to drop interceptions. Mm -hmm. They've got to make plays when they have the opportunity. If they can make the plays yeah. when they have the opportunity, they're going to have a chance to win some football games. If they'd made a few plays today, they probably would have, there's a good chance they would have won the game. You know, you don't have the fourth down, you know, the fourth quarter interceptions potentially because of uh, trying to force the ball in mm -hmm. in a couple of spots. They can't get a running game going, so that it's all based on their, their passing game, and that becomes really tough. It's, it's really tough because these guys on the outside are saying they, they can't run it. We're just going. And these teams are dropping down because they've got, they got eight, seven guys back there because it only takes four guys to put the pressure on, on Andy. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of things. You, you just, but it really comes down to you can't allow the mistakes and four turnovers and not getting any turnovers. You're not going to you're not gonna beat anybody. I don't care who you are. You're not going to win the game. And with the defense, they gave up some yardage today, but – Pretty much that bend, don't break model they played today. Gino came up, he had yeah. two sacks. Yeah. How frustrating do you think the defense feels that the offense can't kind of help them out? Well, I mean, being on the defensive side, I mean, you want everything to be balanced. You, you sometimes you got to think every time you go out there, you're not worried about what offense is doing because once you start to worry about that, then that can affect how you play. Then you can be a lot more frustrated. You can only, like Jim said before, you got to take advantage of the opportunities and the plays you have. They had two picks that they could have had today. Uh, possibly took one back to the house. That would have been points for the defensive side. And, you know, some key plays that they gave up out there that, 
you know, with Jacksonville coming in, they had some guys that were out too. I will allude to the side of the offensive side for the Bengals. One of the things that's hurting them is the receivers can't separate from guys too. So when you can have a pass rush like you have where it's a four-man rush or, you know, getting sacks like that and you can't protect or start it, get a running game going, I mean, it's a problem all across the board. So, I mean, that's where I say good teams find a way to win. They, they do, and, and I think the defense – Okay, they had to be exhausted today. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Because they were on the field a lot. At one point, yeah. it was 27 mm-hmm. minutes to like 14. It's so almost two to one. And, you know, it was, it was an unusually warm day yeah. with the humidity. Mm-hmm. So those guys, they hung in there pretty well. The fortunate thing was the field position early on, Jacksonville was really pinned back. Mm-hmm. So they, they went a, lot, a long way to get three points. Mm-hmm. Right. So they were accumulating yards, but they weren't getting scores, and, except for field goals and – as much as I love field goals, you're not going to win if you're kicking a lot of field goals, <laughs> no, typically. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, with the game kind of getting out of hand, really, with those three interceptions, Zach Taylor in the presser today after the game, you know, I guess the question got asked about maybe replacing Andy. Is that, is that just kind of too early to say that? Uh, I still think even if you replace Andy, you still got issues up front. So until you're able to rectify that and fix that problem it's still going to be the same thing you still can't run the ball so at this point you're talking about getting to the bye week or you know you're going to London and you you do you want to make that switch right now I don't know if that's the best move to do but you need to fix what you have up front or you got to change what you want to do uh, whether you get into a power game or whatever scheme you want to try and you know get a running game going and help keep people from getting in the back and just sacking Andy anytime they feel like it you know, my thought is at some point they're going to have to probably do something. Yeah, they will. He's in the last year of his contract. At, right now, at the rate they're going, probably they'll needs. have a very high draft pick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's some really good quarterbacks coming out. Is Maybe you see what you have in well, Finley. Well, find out if Finley can play. But to Rodney's point, it's, it's difficult when – you know, we know I, I, I'm, I'm a huge Andy Dalton fan. Mm-hmm. When he has time, he's, he can play. It's tough to play when there's people in your face, you yeah. know, and, and I, I don't care if it's Tom Brady. Tom Brady, that's how the New York Giants beat them in two Super Bowls. That's true. You get people in your face. There's no yeah. place to step up and throw. You know, you, you want to be able to step up in, in the pocket, right? Right. I'm not seeing a lot of pockets to step into, and that makes it very difficult for everybody. So it's – they're in a yeah. tough. They, they have some tough decisions to make, and they're difficult decisions, based on are they really getting to, getting to see the full effect? Right. Yeah. Well, the Rams look good today, and they're oh, headed to it. London to, yeah. to play them. So that's probably not going to be a, another I, win for them. But I, I, I will tell you this. I mean, it's still hard. Erickson, Erickson had a great game today, and a receiver the way he's able. And when you're trying to run crossing routes, you're trying to. They just got to get separation from the secondary and, you know, be able to help Andy also. Like you said, he was throwing in the tight windows today. And all of that comes, to, comes together. If you can't protect him and you still can't separate from defensive backs, it's going to be hard. So even if you put another quarterback in there. And think about this. Tyler Boyd <laughs> was covered a lot by Miles Jack. Yeah, the linebacker. that's what I'm saying. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Man, <laughs> I mean, was, Jack is a good playmaker, though. He's a oh no, he's a great he's a great player. I'm just saying right. to, to have a yeah. linebacker that can run with your best receiver like that, right? And make and make intercept and undercut it. And that's pretty that's impressive. Stuff, that's pretty amazing. All right, well, Jim Rodney, thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you. We're coming right back with a special story of a West Side married couple united in love for fitness. You don't want to miss this one.